Hi everyone, this is Matt from DrawingTutorialsOnline.com. I wanted to take a moment and share with you another video critique. Uh, this one is from Arjun once again. He's a great member of DTO and he always comes up with these really awesome questions. Well, this week, Arjun is trying to fit a cube around a head. And sometimes when you try to fit these perfect geometric forms like a cube around something that is very organic, like the figure or a portrait, it doesn't always feel right. So my recommendation to Arjun is to try to study the anatomy of the skull and look at where the front of the skull kind of turns to the side of the skull and to draw your box in more of a curvy organic way. I think that's the better route when trying to fit a cube around something that is organic. So with this video critique, there's like a two minute setup where I'm reading a little bit of what he wrote. And if you can get through that, it's a pretty cool video. I, I think you'll learn a lot about how to deal with surface planes on a portrait and with the skull. So let's get to it. All right, here we go. Let's get started now with chapter three for the October 28th video critique. And let's start with Arjun's cube around the head. Okay, so it says here, Hi Matt, since you talked about the center line last week, I did this exercise of drawing a cube around objects. Robert Beverly Hill says that this is good practice, so I thought, why not give it a try? He explains that in a lecture how to ride depth lines, height lines, and width lines to get to another point. That sounds super confusing. Um, I first tried drawing a box around an existing cylinder and a sphere. Then I drew a box around Marjot Robbie's head. I'd like to know how you do it with the face. I'd also like to know if this process can be re reduced to something quicker. What Okay, so what I've found, Arjun, that this is really, it is good practice, and, and it's a great exercise, and every artist should do this, because it just helps you to understand things so much more. But what I've really discovered over the last couple of years, especially with my teaching, uh, comes from when I do the form class with my students. In the past, I used to make the students draw the model in all cylinders, and then I had them draw the model in all boxes. And I kept finding that when I would do the box figure myself, that it just didn't work for me anymore. Like I just see things with the figure in terms of it being all so curvy and organic. And to try to do the box, I could never do a perfectly geometric box. It has to be an organic curved box. So it can be done. So uh, for me, it's a thousand percent about the skull. And since you're first in chapter three of the video critiques, I, I, I'll bring this into Photoshop in a moment. But I have a skull that uh, somebody uploaded to the critique gallery last week, and I've set this up for you so I can explain what I'm talking about. We have a skull to the right, and the photographer always has to put two lights on it and ruin the party. Okay, if there was one light source hit in the skull, it would be even that much better to explain. But I'm going to try to force it. The way that I look at form of the head, and I'm going to show you the key landmarks in, in a second, and it's not complicated, and you can do this no problem. First, let's get rid of this god-awful secondary light source hitting the side plane of the skull. I don't know why photographers do that. I do know why. It just makes the photo look so much slicker. But let's just kind of do something like that. Yep. Okay, cool. Now, when I try to think of the box with the skull, I think of the landmark right here. I kind of had it right the first time and I went a little overboard, but it's right here. This is where the front of your forehead meets with the side of the head. And this is how you do this quicker. Let me get centered to it. Forehead. One could argue that it's a little bit more like that. That's our front plane. 
that's our side plane. Now we come down to the cheekbone and from the cheekbone to the chin, that for me is the front plane of the head in terms of a box. Now this would be the side plane. And the top is the top is the top. It's just very much round and organic. So that would be our round top plane. Okay. So the landmark that you've got to very much focus on is right here. It's technically, it, it, it could even be like a little bit more to the right, right there, right here the cheekbone. I'm not being 100% perfect with this. I can sit here and analyze it for 10 minutes and really make it perfect, but I'm trying to do this on the quick for you. Um, that's the most important thing. Now, the ideal situation that you will not find on the internet is where the surface plane shift shifts from the side to the front that's where the whole side of this box should be the shadow side when we talk about form light. And then this, in an ideal world, should be our lightest light. Okay, front plane light, front plane light, front plane light, front plane light, and side plane shadow. But it, that's how I see the box. And when we do this very quickly over here, if I can get the right size brush. So I like to think about the head as a shape like that. Now that's a little more of a profile. Now I find the temple, eye socket, cheekbone. That's the quick way. Now that's not the same view. That's more tilted, more angled, I should say. So what we've what I've just created. So these are our perspective lines. What I've just created is, is more leaning on the side of a profile view versus a three quarter. It, it's still a three quarter, but it's a little bit more profile -y three quarter. So that's how I think about the box. I cannot draw a regular box like this because my history with teaching tells me that it's that students wind up drawing worse and it does not help them. So if I'm going to do the perfect box, which you can see I'm already screwing up. There is no perfect box for me, but if we're going to do the right thing and I'm going to try to teach it in the context of what you're asking, that's how I would do the box. But the for me with people, with a portrait or with a figure or with hands or with feet, it's always about the anatomical landmarks that it's the surface planes of the anatomical landmarks, not some theory of box. That's my philosophy. I think Robert Beverly Hale, I, I don't know too much about him, if I'm going to be perfectly honest with you. I read one of his books many, many years ago, and uh, it was a little too heady for me. I'm a little bit more, you know, I like to use plainer language, but it's good. Like, I'm so happy that you're experiencing these different people, and I'm extremely happy for you that you're doing a drawing like this because you're learning so much from doing this. But now my take is when we look at this, model, actress, singer, uh, I'm going to look for the anatomical landmark. And I'm going to look through the beautiful face and I'm going to say, well, here is the temple. Well, this, we can even raise it a little bit because the eyebrow, right? Let's start over. If we could raise this, but I'm looking at the shadow. Uh, I 
I'm using clues of this shading on her face. There's a tonal shift over a value shift from the light to the shadow right over there. Now the shadow is not a dark shadow, but it's it's a shadow nonetheless. Okay, and uh, that's how I see the side. Now there's all these theories with Loomis and Bridgman and Hale, and all these people are great. I just like to go with the anatomy. So now when I try my very best to look at or look for the anatomical landmarks through the hair that I should be doing this a little bit darker so you can see it. Bear with me, bear with me. So that's the front plane. I'm doing a little bit more surface planes, Arjun. I'll, I promise you I'll try to do the box after. Um, that's the front plane of her chin. This is that line that really shows the front plane of the box. Now this is curved. That's her skull. Let me outline that with white into her trapezius. And let's go back to black and this is her skull. Hair sits above the skull. Let me use white because I know that's very difficult to see right now. Now the box. Temple. Eye socket shape. That to me is the front plane. And let's take the mandible. Pull it back. Let's try to do the pure box, which I don't like to do, but let's try it. See, I'm already screwing up. I, I The pure box for me, it, it just doesn't work. Like I need to do the organic thing with the anatomical landmarks on the skull. It just, it to me, it, it makes more sense. But that's the box right there. And I think the box that I just drew there is disgusting. So let's get rid of that because it just, it, it's a great exercise, but I think this is just coming from me and I'm not trying to diss anybody else. I think that the better exercise is to draw the organic curved lines. And I'm going to show you one other thing uh, that helped me to understand all this. Uh, okay. So th that's how I, I, I see it. Now, let me do the other thing before I forget. So uh, let's just create a little dark space over here so we can draw on that dark space so we can make it a little bit more simple for you to see. Sometimes when we draw the body, let's just do a very, very quick, uh, where are we, where are we? A torso peanut. Hopefully you can see this. So. You know, you, you draw the torso peanut, it's organic, but now we say, okay, let's do the surface planes. So that's going to be the chest. Uh, this is going to be the abs. This is going to be the lower abs. And then this is going to be the side of the body. And we're using all of these straight lines. This is the center line of the sternum, navel, center line of the abs. It's just so doggone rigid. But what I understood is that now what we can do is we can draw the box with really curved edges and it just makes everything so much more believable than doing a perfectly geometric type box. So you round all the edges. Now clues here that are extremely beneficial are uh, the tones, the values, the light versus the shadow. So there is an extremely subtle shadow on the side plane of her face. And that for you, Arjun, should be the clue as to where the box turns from the front to the side. From the front to the side. It's the light and it's the value shifts. Okay. I wish I was a little neater with that. Now, um, when we look at this skull, 
it's not just like what I drew on this beautiful actress, singer, celebrity. I don't know what she is, uh, but that is not a flat box like that. This skull, if we draw the lay of the land, these are all different surface planes. Okay, they're, they're, it's craziness. This is a cylinder. Uh, the form is nuts. Okay, uh, the, the box is still there. And you, if you get 10 artists who try this exercise, the 10 artists will discern the box a different, all 10 different ways. Uh, they'll see it all many, many different ways. But for me, it goes to the form, the surface planes, the form of anatomy, always. And now we can break this down even further and say, okay, uh, if we're going to talk about surface planes, And again, I'm doing the surface planes because of the light and shade. So I'm following the light and shadow, and that is the light and shadow and the anatomy is dictating to me where that box is. Make sense? Let's get you drawn because you did such a, a very beautiful job. Let's bring it into Photoshop. Let's enlarge it. Hopefully you can hear my son in the other room playing Xbox with his friends on Sunday night. I, I think you have um, the perspective wrong with the box, okay? Uh, slightly. The corner of her head, Arjun. The corner of her head. Let me make this a little bit bigger. is at the temple. This is where I see the corner of her head if we're going to do a pure box. Yep. No doubt. But I don't see it that way. It it doesn't it doesn't compute to me. But I love what you're doing here. This is just magnificent. Now, um the cylinder within a box, I kind of like to do them I like to have my box, now watch, I'm going to not do this correctly. I like to have the box kind of touching a little bit more the edge of the cylinder. And that disc, the ellipse, I remember doing this like in ninth grade. I saved them and I, I found them in my basement. I have all these old mechanical drawings that I did with a ruler with all these mathematical equations in ninth grade with Mr. Mahler and we had to do it with all these drafting tools from like the 60s and stuff and we had to draw these like perfect ellipses and the ellipses are inside of like the actual box the square and uh so having the it has to the ellipse has to kind of touch the edge of the box it the Ellipse should not be within the box. Like if I take the very top of your box, the ellipse has to fit in there. Okay. And then it, it, it just becomes um, much more tangible that way. And you're using the laws of perspective. Maybe one day I'll find those drawings. They're in my closet with a gazillion other pieces of art. And maybe I'll show them. But it's old school. But I, I, I love that stuff. And... Um, I did it in ninth grade, and, and it really relates to all of this. I, I Listen, I, I love what you're doing. I'm going to put this critique to a close. I think what you're doing is amazing. It's the anatomy. It's the, you're better off drawing the skull. If you don't want to render it, just draw it very loosely and use the anatomical landmark of the skull. And the anatomical landmark is this and this. That's where the head turns from the front to the side. Okay? All right, awesome. Let's see, who's next? 
Thank you so much for watching that. I really appreciate it. If you have any follow-up questions to that, just leave them in the comments below. Also, finally, this Friday, I am filming some new sketchbooks. I think I'm filming three of them this Friday. Uh, I have a great class this, this year. I think you're going to really enjoy checking out their sketchbooks. I should post a new sketchbook video next week. I'm excited for it, and I, I'm excited uh, for you to check out uh, some of these students' sketchbooks. So thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you soon.